Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much to James and Alex for getting the crowd all hyped up here. We're live at MCM here from London. I'm Stress. Alongside me is Spud, and apparently we're going to enjoy Spud this morning. I hesitate to imagine what that could possibly mean under the circumstances. <laughs> Hopefully. I'll, oh, be fine. I'll, be, I'll be living through the event. Also, tip to James and Alex while you're at the back. Odie's around somewhere. He knows how to like fling the wristbands really far. So try and like, get some use them like tips. a rubber band. Because then you can get them like, all the way to the back. That's, that's your test for after this game. But nevertheless, we are here for League of Legends. OG is like, OG is like filth. Though. Yeah, so well, he's probably I, got I the mean, actual power. As we said, we're here for League of Legends. We're going to get some League of Legends action underway. As we said, Tick, Trick, and Duck, which I think we've had a little bit more practice saying that over the last couple of months. So. Had quite a lot of practice saying that doesn't stop me from getting it wrong and nope. reversing some of the vowels and then infused over on the other side of the stage. Uh, this is the lower bracket uh, Constellation final. So this decides who will face. Mistakes were made in the grand finals later today. So this is a best of three. And we'll be getting underway very shortly because I believe we are ready. So infused yesterday made their way through the lower bracket, beating FM Esports in a best of one. And mistakes were made, forced Tick, Trick and Duck down into the lower Constellation finals. And we are into the picks and bans. So there's the bracket for you, and we'll get into the picks and bands straight away here for you for game number one. Yes, indeed. So, Tick, Trick, and Duck, they know that they're probably going to be the favorite team. There's no secret about it. Infused are UK-based. Tick, Trick, and Duck, one of the best EU challenger teams out there. Infused weren't even necessarily favored to win against FM Esports, so they are going to have to rely on their comfort picks. They're going to have to make sure they get through the laning phase because their team synergy may be able to carry them through if they get to a later game stage. Yeah, and you can see that uh, Tick, Trick and Duck, obviously having watched the games yesterday, going to ban away that Kale. Uh, yeah. For everybody that's watching, we are on 4.8 on the live server. So uh, the Kale build that's been oh so popular with that Hurricane that is incredibly strong, shreds through uh, you know, all the resistances, is not going to be used in this, this game, and neither is Jax. No, I suspect we're not going to be seeing Kale for this entire series because she's quickly becoming the most perma-banned champion there is in the entire game. Uh, that does, of course, leave open a lot of different mid laners. There's still Yasuo, there's still Cassidy, there's still all these power picks that, because you're forced to ban out Kale and Jax every single time, end up slipping through. And then the last ban is going to be Ziggs. Taken away from Snow, we've seen how yeah. well Snow can do on Ziggs. And in fact, when it wasn't available, uh, Tick, Trick and Duck, I, I feel kind of maybe faulted a little bit uh, when they didn't have that Ziggs to carry the game as well as they did in game one against uh, Mistakes Were Made. Maybe it didn't quite go their way. So has been banned away. Nidley picked up first pick. Instantly there we see the Thresh and Jarvan. That's two picks that Infused have heavily favored. Yeah, indeed. And I've got to say about the Nidley as well. Although Tick, Trick and Duck looked a little bit lost without the Ziggs, most of those games Nidley was also banned out. Very true, and I think it's kind of a statement here that uh, typically with mid lane Nidalee, there are a couple of counters to it. And it depends on how uh, Infused are going to play this out. We can see Tick, Trick and Duck have taken Elise here alongside Zyra, and maybe Infused looking there to uh, to counter with, well, to, to answer with an Ariana and an Ezreal. So uh, just to note, Lissandra is not available, neither is Braum. Neither is Shen, I believe. All three are not available for this, so uh, that's why you're not seeing supports picking up Braum, even though he's so incredibly fun. Yeah, and incredibly strong. Probably due for a nerf in the next patch, come to think of it. But uh, what we are seeing here, a bit of a resurgence of Zyra, honestly. This yeah. entire tournament, we've been seeing her over and over again. This time specifically being played because they're going up against Thresh. You're smiling because Braum can be hovered yeah. over. We are on the live server, but <laughs> not allowed to pick it. So one thing I was going to pick up on with the mid lane pick, I didn't want to say it too early, but uh, hinting back to that Nidalee counter, Yasuo has been played incredibly well against Nidalee. Really just stops most of her damage and anything that she can do in lane. Uh, and I was wondering whether Infused were going to play that kind of counter the lane style or go for the more skill-based matchup of picking an Orianna. And there you're kind of at an even playing field in that middle lane. Now, Orianna is a champion that can get through any single lane you can imagine. There's basically no counter to her, but the flip side of that is she doesn't counter that many champions. And Nidalee tends to be able to sustain through her damage from a reasonably early stage. She'll fall behind, you know, a small amount of CS in the early game. Some Nidalees, of course, seem to have the ability to just out-CS their opponents, even though they are in a disadvantage matchup. Something we've seen Ocelot do in the past, but uh, not expecting the Teemo. 
<laughs> uh, you you know, know, if they lock it in, they'll have my eternal respect. And hatred. But I don't think they'll win. They've taken Graves here for Infuse. Now, uh, Wawa yesterday, I believe, went something like 40 minutes on Graves without dying and only died once in the entire game. He ended that game 11-1. and one. Uh, So it was a very impressive performance against FM Esports down in that bottom lane. And on the flip side of that, we're seeing in response to the Graves here, the Corky again, which we saw yesterday out of uh, in that Tick, Trick and Duck versus Mistakes Were Made game. Uh, we saw Corky come back in. It was to, to bring mixed damage into the composition as well, but uh, it seems to be something that uh, is kind of creeping back in. Yeah, it's very much been creeping back in for a while. Uh, mostly seen in Korea, actually. As they so often are, they seem to be slightly ahead of the meta. But here, Corky is serving a very specific purpose for Tick, Trick and Duck it's giving them a ton of poke, disengage, and siege potential. Corky, deceptively good, builds the Triforce, and that automatically makes you good at going in for a small amount of damage on a tower and then backing out. And they've already got the Strangle Horns, they've always already got the Cocoon to just force anyone who's trying to charge them down and get an engage off. That might not be as easy as they'd like against Java though, since you can cast them through CC. Yeah, indeed, and uh, with that Javan, it kind of zones away uh, a couple of the AD carry picks that we've been seeing a bit more. We've been seeing Cogmore creep back in, if anybody caught uh, LCS last night, that was played uh, by Yellow Peak as well in his final hurrah. Sorry if there's spoilers for people that didn't watch it. I won't say the results. That would be big spoilers. I didn't actually catch the results. Oh, okay. I, neither that was did I, actually, when I left. I, so. I kind of <laughs> fell asleep because we had to be up early this morning, but I did actually see them as well. So the swaps did all go through for Tick, Trick and Deco. I was uh, keeping an eye. I think they kind of hadn't swapped things around for a while, but... Corky mid. Yeah, exactly. Well, He's like the final one. boss of bronze. Let's go back to season one and do that then. Oh. <laughs> no, but we are into the delay period here. So while our teams are getting into game, going through the first couple of minutes, of course, we have the spectator delay so that the, uh, the teams can't hear what we're saying. Otherwise, that would be pretty bad. That, that would be bad. Yeah, not not ideal, obviously, here. <laughs> so we've got, you know, a jungle, I mean, mid Javan. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, no. Seriously, though, Infused here picked themselves into some pretty solid lane matchups overall. Their bot lane may have a little bit of trouble. Top lane should be able to really build up an advantage, and their mid lane should be able to free farm and get a small advantage early on. The problem that I could foresee them suffering is that the way Dan Bell's Jarvan is very high damage. Mm. If he is trying to be the primary engager on the enemy team here, he's going to be very, very squishy, and it's going to be much easier for them to just burst him away. And if one engage fails, he's going to have to go back, look for another, you know, return to the tower, lose quite a lot of health on the tower, and then look for another engage. So that could become quite a significant problem for him. It's interesting that we're seeing a Jace pick here in the top lane rather than some of the more favorable lanes against Shivana. Jace was the last champion that was locked in. Uh, typically against Shivana, you see a lot of Trundle picked uh, because the, uh, the resistance shredding from Subjugate is just so, so good against her in lane. And his way of controlling team fights and late game scaling is very, very good. So I'm kind of surprised to see them focus this more damage when you already alluded to the fact that the way uh, they normally build Jarvan isn't towards a tank, and now Jace won't be either. Yeah, so Dan may, of course, adapt his build. That is always an option for them. Yeah. But the thing that Jace is doing for them here is he's giving them, firstly, massively long-range wave clear. Shock Blast Acceleration Gate is probably one of the single best abilities in the game for trying to hold the tower against a poke composition. Gives them a little bit of return fire, and he gives them, crucially, Acceleration Gate. So they've got the Acceleration Gate to get the whole team moving. They've got the Orianna with the Dissonance to get the whole team moving. And then they can try and follow that up, get the Jarvan engage, and then just win a team fight if they can get it. So very much focused on countering Tick, Trick, and Duck. And it's not like it's a bad lane matchup. He's got range, and Shivana doesn't. And that always means, basically, you can poke them out of the lane. Shivana may be able to sustain through it after a while, but not an easy early game. Sorry, I just noticed a really cool TPA Ezreal in the front row. Ooh. I can see a shirt. On the front, I mean, no, uh, right next, well, it, there's a, even a TPA oh, t-shirt. Oh, right. That, I mean, yes, there is a Lee Sin right next to <laughs> it as well. Like, it, I, I just, the TPA t-shirt caught me off guard. It's impressive. It's dedication. It's, it's good. It's got the foam finger as well. Like, mm, it's true. It's good. 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 I do. I'm really bad at recognizing... Oh, dear. You're not really bad at recognizing cosplay, eh? 
I'm You're in really, the I'm just place. really bad at recognizing in general. Okay. So like I, I mean, I, there I, are lights, and you know, it's difficult to kind of see everybody. But I can see we have a pretty big crowd already here at MCM. It's awesome to see so many people out this early for League of Legends as well. And hopefully, the games will be as good as we are all anticipating, because I cannot wait. We are in the loading screen as well, so we're getting there. We're, we're very, very nearly into game here. I'm trying to play Snap. Snap. I'm trying to get like one of the skins on the oh, screen. Oh, okay. That's a like, good match game it to for the, us. Match it to the crowd, but I can't actually... I'd be impressed I'm if not there getting, was... I'm not guessing Earthrider Corky. I That'd was going to say, I'd be impressed if there was an Earthrider Corky out there. I would like to see that, though. If anybody wants to do an Earthrider Corky cosplay, maybe for, for October, maybe? That, would, that would be good. If, if we see that, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be. That would be really, really cool. So would a Dark Forge Javan actually, because there's a lot of armor involved in that. Yeah, there's not much sort of person in that. Yeah. You're, you're pretty much just... In ga that would be uncomfortable. It would be. But we are now into game, mm -hmm. and I believe there is a pause about to come, which is <laughs> one of the uh, more disappointing things about starting the first game of the day, but maybe not. Yeah. I did see it on the screens, so I know it's coming. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, I was thinking, how is he... How does he oh know this dear. happening? Uh, there we yeah, go. There you ah, go. clairvoyance. Wow, so you good. and your crystal hey, ball. Hey, look, I, when we're at MCM, I just inherit superpowers. Ah, I'm like Peter but Petrelli, but like I can't, I'm not that good. But if you, you watched Heroes. But you, yeah, I did watch Heroes. Good, okay. Oh, at least I watched the first season when it was good. Do, do you know what? If you stopped there, you probably did yeah. a great job. I know. Great I, job. I was, I was going to start watching the second season, and then someone was like, don't. No. Just I, don't. I love being a Comic Con because we can have these kind of conversations during the pause. It's, it's and fine. Luckily, the crowd, I would hope, would understand at least some of the uh, the content. But we are here for League of Legends, so let's get back to League of Legends while we're at it. And I think the demographics overlap. I, exactly. There's, there's a big overlap of the demographic, and I, I think we're yeah. There we go. We are ready as well. So uh, one of the things I wanted to look at was the limitations of compositions. Is something we've talked about uh, both. Uh, compositions actually have really good wave clear for once. <laughs> That's something yeah. that Welcome typically there's one team that just has better ready. wave clear than another, and they really struggle against the siege. This time, however, sieging is going to be kind of difficult for uh, both just because of the wave clear. Yeah, that is true. Tick Trick and Duck, though, they're going to be very happy if they get into a siege situation to very, very slowly chip away at towers. They can keep themselves in for a very, very long time, and the only you know counter counter poke that would come in would be the really Jace. But assuming Nidalee gets off a decent start, gets a blue buff, gets an Athenes, she's going to be able to heal through most of all of that damage, and that means they can just stick around until they get enough spears to force somebody out. Therefore, infused, although they they can cope with that situation moderately well, especially if they're doing like a four v five hold, split pushing with somebody else. Although that situation could work for them, if they start falling too far behind, they really will need to watch out for it, and they'll need to try and keep Tick, Trick, and Duck from forming the five-man death ball. Now, we've seen Tick, Trick, and Duck do this ward quite a lot, but this time you can see Infuse kind of prepared for it, warded themselves to make sure that they could spot the ward to, uh, to track the jungle progress as well. So uh, good knowledge out of both teams, knowing what was going to happen. Snow might be a little bit boxed in here. Going to get cut off by the Ariana ball, but no engage from Infuse. But they uh, they do have somewhat information now. They know there's no invade on that uh, red buff for Infuse, which means Elise is in one of two places. So now they've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, indeed. Both of the junglers here not not an obvious position. Both of these junglers have some very strong early ganks. The only thing is top lane gank for Dan. A little bit difficult in this early game, which means most likely going to be at least farming until level four. Whereas Elise heading towards that bottom lane, Thresh tends to play aggressive in the lane. That's one of the reasons Zara is good against him. It's easy for her to grasping root. That could potentially lead very easily into a gank, especially if they come through the lane. I'm wondering whether Elise is actually going to commit to a gank in the bottom lane because uh, looking at the way it's pushing, Tick Trick and Duck are actually pushing uh, Infuse quite far deep into the lane here and it's a difficult angle to get in on Elise without some kind of like lantern. You're, you're pretty much relying on uh, a good grasping route and from here it's under tower. So it's very difficult to actually get in on that bottom lane. So I, I kind of more expecting Elise to head towards mid. We saw them uh, 
a lot of focus on mid lane ganks yesterday. A heavy, heavy focus. Mainly because there were Cassidins in the game. Uh, and you need to get him through the early stages, and it's not quite the same here with two consistent mid laners, but it looks like junglers are just going to go passive for now. Yeah, defensively farm yourselves up, get yourself strong. Dan moving into the top lane right now, basically because Jace is a squishy laner, who's bullying early and has been pushed up to tower, so he needs to be there just in case Elise is. So he did check the river here, would have found Elise if he was there. Now he's free to go back and farm. He's heading towards the top lane. And this is most likely where we'll see the first one. If there's going to be one in the near future. So Talise can lane gank reasonably effectively. And she's got the red buff at this point. She can chase effectively with the repel and she comes in through the lane. Infused feel like they've warded out for it when you look at uh, the ward that I believe it was Dan placed here. The problem is Elise is going to want to come through the back of the lane as he's pushing it like that. It's very unlikely that she's going to come up through River because, although saying that, uh, <laughs> oh no, she's just going for the uh, the, the invade. I was going to say, uh, typically once a teleport comes in, yeah, coming up through River is uh, a little bit more of a longer path. But here's the mid lane gang, so we were expecting Cocoon does land and the spear. Forces the flash out, repel up, doesn't choose to follow, but they got both flash and heal. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, Lantern comes in. Tick, Trick, and Duck thought they had the engage. It's infused that get it. Flag and Drag gets dodged away with the flash, but a lot expended across the map. So one of the things that Jarvan does very, very well is actually counter as Zyra. Something we haven't really been, hasn't been a factor in the meta for such a long time because they're both underplayed picks. You can flag and drag your way straight through the route, and by the time you get to the other end of your dash, the route is almost over. You get the knock-up, you chase it down with the red buff, you secure the kill, and hence you get an easy, an easy setup there. Which is a little bit concerned for Zyra's health, but doing a pretty, doing a pretty bit, uh, decent bit of a job there with Harass. Sort of freezing the lane as well. Yeah, just making sure that it's not shoved all the way in. That way when uh, Corky comes back in, they haven't lost a lot of experience to the tower. So uh, good, good holding there. But Infuse did draw first blood. It gives him a slight advantage here. And uh, I'm pretty sure the UK team will be content with that, wanting to uh, snowball that further. But we have still got a long way in this best of three still to go. That's only the first kill of many, I, I feel. Yeah, indeed. And Tick, Trick, and Dark are going to start hitting some power spikes soon. Level 6 on the mid lane means obviously Cougar Form, which is a big, big deal. When they hit level 6 on their bottom lane, they also suddenly get huge all in potential because they get the Zyra with the ultimate, the Strangle Thorns, which amplifies the plant damage. And they also get a big spike from Corky because he gets his missiles, which is quite a good sustained damage. Oh, up in the top lane, Phantom Joe is taking a lot of damage. Does have Flash still available, but wasn't level 6, so no dragons to send available to get away from that. But it was just a bit of back and forth on that damage. Both teleports now not available from returning to lane, so any kind of dragon control really isn't in either team's favor for the next couple of minutes. So they're going to likely want to wait for either some picks or those teleports to come up to be able to uh, actually start looking towards dragon. But it, it's actually in views that have better warding down on that lower side of the map. They already have three wards across river. Yeah, they're going to have to keep an eye out here, though, because Lantern is still down for three more seconds. Ooh, Repel wasn't quite in range. Valkyrie forward. Looks like Sarah just misjudged, misjudged the uh, the Repel distance there. Yeah, and that also obviously shows where Elise is. Dan was actually thinking about going for a dive on the top lane earlier. Because Shivana's getting poked out so much, or was, but she's got a lot of pots, so she's back up to full health now. He didn't know where Elise was at the time, so he thought... Maybe not after all. He's healing up. It could go bad. So he's just stuck around doing a lot of farming. Looks like he's going to be going for the Spirit of the Elder Lizard this game, which is what we've been seeing from him in the past. Which has very nearly landed that hook in the bottom lane. Just kind of skimmed past Bonaparte there. But, uh, you know, the hooks have kind of been, been okay so far. But if he can start landing even more in lane, that would really... Uh, set them up quite nicely. Not a very big CS difference in pretty much most of the lanes. Only really uh, middle lane is uh, a small difference. Chaz doesn't quite land that hook oh. either, but he perhaps is some of the all-in potential from Tick, Trick, and Duck. They're not level 6 yet, so they don't have strangle forms. Here comes Cataclysm out from the jungle. Here's the teleport as well. Grimdog's got to get his way away. Cancels the teleport, actually. Oh. Midley is here, though. Cougar form allows her to roam. Chaz flashes jump over it. the wall. We'll get away with that, and that teleport was cancelled in the end by Phantom Joe. 
yeah, actually it wasn't Phantom Joe. It was Jubert deciding ah. that he didn't want to follow that up. He would have been going into an unfor unfavorable engagement. So he just said, actually, let's not do that. Elise is going to take the opportunity to try for the steal here, but it may get her caught and she's forced to flash out. That's uh, kind of an important flash right now when uh, when you consider that we're starting to get to the point where these jungle objectives are just going to be uh, a little bit more important. You look at Dragon from there, if you're able to secure it but are in that kind of fight aspect, flashing out is actually really important on Elise because there's no targets to repel to outside of the pit unless you're incredibly lucky. Uh, so it's one of those things that if a Dragon happens within the next couple of minutes, I Nightmare is a little bit, uh, a little bit vulnerable. You're very committed. Yeah, like you, you can't get out without the flash, and obviously that's not necessarily a big problem for Tick, Trick, and Duck because the way they're going to try and play a dragon fight if it happens is they don't really want to start it unless they really feel they can rush it down very quickly. And the longer they can hold off without actually getting a fight, the more nearly spears get thrown. And Snow is starting to look pretty scary. He's ahead on CS against Oriana in this game, in spite of the fact that he's disadvantaged from the CS matchup. He's built himself up. Quite a bit of gold, already up to 600 gold ahead. Yeah, that's a, a pretty nice lead in what should essentially be an even farm lane. Uh, we talked about Oriana, she doesn't exactly have any bad matchups, and as long as you can kind of uh, avoid any spears from Nidalee, you should be able to farm at uh, actually a fairly close rate to her. So we'll see whether that farm difference can come back in towards. Infuse favor. I Nightmare gets spotted out there. Is uh, Geo there? What Nightmare? Is yeah, he's not I Nightmare. We, we assumed. We assumed it was I Nightmare all along. Yeah, but he came up to us in the bar last night. L Nightmare, but the font makes it seem like I Nightmare. And I Nightmare seems like I Nightmare better. is a much better name. I, I thought that as well. Like Nightmare is just generic. Yeah. Oh well, we'll go with I we'll Nightmare. With. Maybe he's out of sheer yeah. spite. Yeah, we'll decide what he's called. <laughs> he doesn't have any name, any, any say in his name anymore. But <laughs> what he does have a say in is this game, this series, this best of three series to see who goes to the grand finals to face mistakes were made. And it's a bit of a slower affair than we've seen in the last couple of days. Well, I mean, we've seen a couple of um, longer paced games over in EU LCS, but they've been a little bit more explosive here at MCM. Right now, three kills in, just at the 11 minute mark. Maybe we might see another here, as Chaz does get rooted in place. Here comes the follow-up, does have the rocket barrage as well. Elise is headed into lane, finds himself Dan as well, does get the knock-up. Nightmare's in a little bit of trouble here. Cataclysm comes out, Repel will dodge it, manages to stay alive, and does not fall to the collateral damage. That was just straight up Dan not assessing the situation correctly. And with an Elise, even though she's weaker in the one-on-one -on -one than Jarvan was in that circumstance, she's going to be able to stall. And they were already winning the fight in the bar. Oh, hook in the bottom minute. Do they want to follow yeah, up? Yeah, Stranglethorns <laughs> is available and Chaz will fall. And that leaves Wawa in a terrible position right now. Does get the quick draw out, so keeps himself alive. But that's two picks. That could be a dragon. That could be. Elise is a very safe dragon taker, but they've taken a lot of damage overall. They need Nidalee to come down. She will do that. Wow! Quite a lot of damage there on Phantom Joe. So, a big fact here. Jive is now the only other player apart from me I've ever seen with this build. You go Last Whisper first against Bruiser in top lane. Literally because you're expecting them to build a Sunfire Cave. Oh, okay. If they don't, it, it backfires slightly. But it can work. Because people sometimes are like, I'm building this, whatever. It's kind of just backfired a little bit there because... This is building a health and a build water cutlass. Yeah, health and a build water cutlass doesn't really do too much to your armor yeah. values. So I think that's kind of a bit of a risky situation in the fact that had he got chain vest first, he actually would have been okay. But it hasn't yeah. quite worked out. That dragon did go in favor of Tick, Trick and Duck in the end. and. They have themselves a, a pretty nice lead right now. Nearly 1,500 is the lead. But Top Tower did go down in favor of Infuse. That is typically what Jace is pretty good at. Did manage to get in front of the tower, use that hypercharge, and take it down. But Dan now may be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get that Damasian standard, get his way out Ooh. of there. But the spear 
The spear predicted it, and now Gilbert is... Oh, I thought he had that against Phantom Joe. I thought he had it, but he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't. <laughs> he, was, he was winning until he lost. <laughs> Tick, Trick and Duck now should be able to get the top tower. They were already ahead on gold from their farm, from their kills here. And this is a big deal because they're going to be building themselves up quite a significant advantage. We saw how scary Nidalee was there. She's taking off more than a third of Jarvan's health per spear. This is starting to get out of control for Infused. It is, and this is one of the reasons why we've seen Nidalee picked a lot, is once you start getting your initial items... Oh, and actually, it, right now is the point at which Nidalee becomes a big problem. She's got enough gold for the needlessly large rod to pair with that Athene's Unholy Grail, which has a massive spike to her damage, because obviously her damage is amplified, the distance of the spear, but once you get at least that base AP from the needlessly large rod, those spears will start absolutely chunking anybody that doesn't have any MR. And you look down the itemization, no real magic resist to talk about on the side of Infused. Yeah, it's a hook landing, but he's learned from his previous mistakes. Oh, he learned from his previous mistakes, but while was coming back into lane, he's lucky this bush is not warded, but it's because Dan is around as well. And I don't think TTD won this flash into the hook. Stranglethorns gets used instantly. TP. Bursts down. Corky there, but the teleport. Oh, oh nice wow. cataclysm prevents the animation finishing from the dragon's descent. They do, however, pick off Thresh, but it's a rotation. Follow that spear. Didn't quite land. And now the turret's in danger. I didn't even know you could do that to a Shivana now. I, I know you can interrupt it as long as the animation has begun because yeah, you can yeah. flay her back, but I didn't realize Cataclysm. Yeah, like it's a with terrain spawning. Of, I knew you could do that with pillars. Right. So I guess it, it, it makes logical sense. I've just never that. seen that. Yeah. I mean, you have to predict that it's going to happen ahead of time there. And regardless of all of that, TikTok and Duck here are just taking a huge amount of gold. They've just built themselves up nearly 5,000 gold. Fuse are going to try and return. They're going to get the mid tower. Oh, Imbolite. But He's being too greedy here. He's staying for too long. He's actually forced to move in towards the wave to try and at least get something else from this because the spear is going to start chunking. No needlessly large rod yet because Snow has been roaming. And Imbolite is uh, on the run here. He will get himself out towards the top lane, but that was perhaps a precarious position. The greedy play pays off. Yeah, indeed. Uh, he, he, the, basically, if Tick, Trick, and Duck had a little bit more vision around this top area, and obviously that's difficult for them at the moment because Geo Bear is so strong and he's pushing out so aggressively, then that would have been much easier to punish. But you never want, if you're in the situation with Diddy, you can chase forever, but you don't want to be chasing into Noriana, especially if you don't know where Jace is. Nightmare got uh, flayed back, but did get the cocoon after all, and Chaz now in trouble once again. Nightmare picks that one up, an easy kill in that bottom lane. Tick, Trick and Duck are just in such a good position. Yeah, uh, Nightmare is starting to, or I Nightmare, starting to pick up a lot of kills across the map now. He's setting up, basically, for the team overall. With that extra gold, sitting on 1,700. Kind of curious what build goes for here. There's an argument to be made for just going like almost straight AP this game because he's already got a little bit of tankiness and they're not trying to get into straight team. They're looking to siege to poke. Getting more AP means your poke gets that much harder. He built the haunting guys, undid it, bought the level two boots, and rebought the amp tone. So he's he going is haunting, building guys. towards that. Yeah, he's going haunting guys. He just wanted the movement speed first, but Hook lands onto Snow, gets pulled into the turret, didn't aggro though, and there the Stranglethorns, is it enough to save him? No, Cataclysm will force him down into the respawn timer, but here comes Jace, this is what they needed to do, rotate him around, the Cuckoo has landed, but nobody there to follow up, no minions, means they cannot go under the turret. Yeah, and they've got good wave clear here, and now that there's less players involved, Dive potential goes down, which means the Graves being down in the bot lane is harder to punish unless they can get a cocoon on a valuable target or Phantom Joe feels like diving. Hook onto Nightmare, but Phantom Joe goes all the way into the fight. Imbolite pushed back behind the turret as Geobear will fall. And now the turret will go down as well. And Tick, Trick and Duck are going to rotate out because Dragon is up in 10. Yeah, that is a good timing for them as well. Get the kills, get the advantage, continue building on it. And even without Needly to poke them down, they were already low enough on infuse. But TTD could just go aggro. Oh, 
but it worked for them. They should be able to pick this up. Dan needs to be very careful. As far as he was concerned, there could have been Zyra in that one. Ooh, ooh, that the, uh, the roots very nearly landed there. Something I wanted to get your opinion on was we've seen Jace come back into things, into the meta a little bit, uh, in that top lane role. Typically we see him build not the, the Mura Mana Mana Mune style that used to be played in Season 3. How do you feel that's going to work in this? The fact that he's not going to have that added mana, it means surely his build is better for laning, and as soon as they get to Siege, he'll run out of mana very quickly. It depends how long he's forced to counter Siege. If he's just holding for two, three, four waves, probably more like two, he can hold that because with this build that he gets, he has so much damage, he practically one shot away. Even the melee creeps can go down in a single shot class acceleration game. That's fine for him, but like you say, if he's forced to be stuck there, and initially he needs to go on forever, then he will be forced to back. And the moment you back, when you have one left there, you're in trouble. Oh, Phantom Joe, I thought he may have been in trouble, but Dan was actually locked in there with Phantom Joe. And Phantom Joe, uh, well, the kill for uh, Thresh went to Zyra, but Dan dropped very low. The chase is actually on from the side from Snow. He's inevitably going to get there because Anidli will chase down the Jarvan, but oh my Ooh. goodness, there's the damage out of Geobed that you're talking ya. about. Snow manages to get the heal off, but here comes the rest of the damage from Sunny. Infused maybe chased a little bit too far, and can they catch up? Oh, that's a good shockwave. It's going to hold them back, but it's not enough. There's a triple kill for Corky. So yeah, you can't ignore Corky either. Going hell for leather to get Nidalee makes a lot of sense if you're trying to break a siege. But if you're in a straight team fight, she's actually not the biggest priority. You need to kill Corky very quickly. But you've also got so many other threats to deal with. And Chavana showed there, she's got plenty of damage to shred through even Dan, who's probably the tankiest member. I hesitate to say it because he hasn't built anything for tanks, but he's probably got the highest base stats of those guys on tank. Yeah, and Maybe I, that's one of the limitations that we kind of hinted at in the beginning of the game was if Dan builds Javan in this very solo queue style build, not the old style of, of Golem into tank items, which has changed. I yeah. mean, we very rarely see that anymore, but was that? Oh, no. Okay. I thought I heard a flash. I was very no, no, you heard the recall I heard a sound. recall sound, yeah. yeah. That one always confuses me sometimes. Well, sometimes. Some of the new particles and sounds are... A little Always bit similar, confuses right? me sometimes. Yep, exactly. Sometimes English is a very hard. easy language. You what? To, uh, exactly. Mm. Uh, but this is a significant lead for Tick, Trick and Duck, which I feel is a very obvious statement to make. But I mean, it, it's kind of compounded by the lack of tankiness for Infuse, because Spears are going to really start shredding through, and oh. there's no real magic resist. She got the blue. She got the blue. Stole it away. Geobet's trying to make something happen, but the all-in is really strong here from Phantom Joe. Actually, a little bit surprised he didn't try for that, but had already used his build water, so it would have been hiding away. You need to save the build water so you can ult after Jace when he knocks it away, and then stick to him if you want to go. At that point, I kind of feel like... Well, actually, Stranglethorn's in the middle lane. It's going to knock up Chaz into the spear as well. The plant was the one that got the kill there. Zyra. Oh, Dan tries to get himself out of there. Did manage to get that last bit of damage down for Geobet to pick off Snow, but Snow is just so, so strong right now. There is so much damage on TTD, and they're kind of go for it. They can do this as long as they're not contested, and Sunny's going to try and distract everyone. Oh, it's a straight up 1v1, but here comes Oriana. Sunny will get taken down by the dissonance, but look at this attempt. It's a three man Baron, and they are taking that down very quickly. Nobody really is available to contest here because there's no smite on the side of Infused anywhere near. Yeah, this is... I'm a little bit surprised Phantom Joe has done this here. He's forcing a little bit more, less of a safe Baron take, but uh, he does chase off Ember Light, so there's not even a hope of stealing. And now they are 10k ahead. They've got a Baron buff. It's only 22 minutes. And that siege now becomes never-ending. Yeah, apart from when Baron expires, but... Well, that's, what, five minutes? <laughs> it, 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 well, it's a long duration on the uh, that Baron buff. I it is five minutes, because it's two minutes after it comes out till the Baron is born. Okay. I think. If I'm wrong, then I'm going to have been wrong for a very long time. 
Because I've always thought that. That's that's how I you remember that it said. You what I hear on LCS now. Oh really? Yeah, but I'll, I'll, go, I'll go. In that case, that. I may well be wrong. This is a thing that has happened in the past. I am entitled to be wrong. <laughs> I'm just what? gonna leave this here. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but no. Well, no, it, I, I, that, that so all the else yes. What we were saying was uh -huh. that there's not a lot of counter siege out of Infuse no. with the fact that uh, Jace is inevitably going to run out of mana. And now Nidalee has so much damage, and does she have a blue buff? Yes, so with that blue buff still on, as it's actually about to expire, um, if she gets another blue, she can just throw spears for days. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that Infuse can do about it. Their regen won't be enough. They ha uh -oh. just have to dodge spears and dodge everything because that's another kill onto Chaz. And he's Two kills. currently sat at 1, 7, and 3 right now. And another kill onto that bottom lane from Infuse. It's going from bad to worse here for Infuse. And Tick, Trick, and Duck don't, don't show any signs of letting up. Another kill as Snow takes down another lane. And Dan fell as well. Man, what do you do? Now there's just this push into the bottom lane. It's gone. This tower is going to die pretty quickly here, and Geobear really doesn't have the kind of siege to hold off four members. Yeah, there is just absolutely no way he can hold on to that. But the gold difference now this big. I'm honestly surprised that they're retreating. Like, keep going for the next tower. I mean, maybe they feel like they can use more minions if they go for the mid lane here. And Shivana is obviously pushing out the top, but... They are so far ahead, they can do almost anything and still come out on top. Yeah, I mean, looking at the gold right now, 1700 on Corky, so should he choose to, he could go back and finish uh, Boots and the Last Whisper very shortly, so it's going to clear the last wave. If he chooses to, he wants to uh, take that down, but to be honest, there's not a lot of armor on the side. Oh, oh he was setting a trap for Wawa. Oh. Wawa didn't get the flash over the wall, and Sunny will take down Another member, eight and three now is Sunny, and I mean, Ow. look at the, the the stat lines on Tick Trick and Duck: five, two, and ten on Zyra support. She has a Leandri Torment. She has the damage to hundred zero damage. She actually oh. does. Nightmare's gonna pick it up. Uh, you can build full tank Zyra, and with a couple of levels, he's dead. She can still do enough damage to do a really significant amount. And at this point, they, she's like so far ahead as well on, on levels, but she's just got a ton of damage built in and a Baron buff. At, at this point, Infused, even though they have wards down, they, they still need to refresh them every now and again. So they have to play that risky game of kind of moving out of their base. And it's punishing them every time they do. And, and from there, there's nothing that can, can really happen. It's basically like, if it goes from a 100% chance of dying, to a 100% chance of dying. Is that yeah. really a risky move? Oh. <laughs> have you ever been one-shotted oh, by an Italy? Uh, I have, okay. actually. It's quite fun. No. They've even picked up uh, the scrying orb as well, but here comes what is likely to be the final engage. As Sunny will take down Dan. Chaz is getting dueled under both Nexus turrets by Phantom Joe. And that is going to be two towers falling pretty quickly. Hey. Sunny is going to fall, though, so Infuse picked himself up. Bit of an exit kill here as Tick Trick and Doug will take down both Nexus turrets shortly. They, they will fall. We assume. We assume. And that is going to be Tick Trick and Doug taking game one here of this best of three. So we'll see whether Infuse can bounce back in this or whether Tick Trick and Doug are going to take this 2 0. That was a crushing defeat. A really crushing defeat. And it wasn't even that they got destroyed in lane. Like, they got out-rotated, out they got out-moved, essentially, by their opponents from the mid-game onwards. And that, obviously, then Snowball nearly picked up kills all over the place. But if you're banning out, you know, Ziggs and Nidalee, then what are you left with for your own, you know, the target bans? Yeah, it, it's... it's a it's an interesting question of where they go on the uh, the pick bans phase from mm. there. And I, I think also when you look at uh, the tankiness of the infused lineup, I really am not sure about taking Javan in the jungle, building him damage, having a damage top laner, having an Orianna, and then from the support role, 
you didn't have anybody like Akama who is going to bestow shields upon people or a Soraka who can heal or somebody that you know has an added sustain so there's no innate uh, healing or tankiness coming from anything on the lineup really of infused and from there it's very easy once you start falling behind to just have it go away and away from you yeah it can work if you get ahead early yeah that's the thing like if you do fall behind you just have absolutely no recourse no engage and as a result they just bled out very very quickly yeah indeed uh, i think we're gonna head to a break while we get all the teams ready and set up for game number two so we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with game number two of tick trick and duck versus infused